Now, what happened? The walls of Jericho come a tumbling down. They walk around Jericho seven times. They yell, the trumpets are blown, and the walls fall down. In the 1930s, there was a guy named John Garstang who went over and he was an excavator of Jericho, excavated for many, many seasons there. And he found the late bronze walls. Yes, he found the walls of Jericho falling outward, just like the Bible says. And when I grew up in Sunday school class, they quoted Garstang, the major excavator of the archaeology of Jericho. And they told us that, look at that, Garstang found the walls of Jericho falling out, just like the Bible says. Archaeology proves the Bible. Archaeology proves the Bible. Garstang found the walls falling outward. Uh, well, all of a sudden, in the 1960s and 70s, there was a woman named Kathleen Kenyon. Kathleen Kenyon, actually they call her Dame Kenyon. She's British, you know, British, they're always a little smarter than everybody else. And so they call her Dame Kenyon, and she excavated at Jericho, uh, for many, many seasons, actually for 20 years, she excavated there. She is the chief excavator of Jericho, many books digging up Jericho, et cetera, that she wrote. And she discovered that what Garstang called his late bronze walls, which would have been in the time of Joshua, she determined that those walls were misdated by Garstang, and he missed it like by 800 years. And so instead of those walls being there with, when Joshua went through, those walls would have been back in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. By the way, is that a little bit different? And so she, that the walls were misdated and that during the time of Joshua, she concluded there were no walls around Jericho. She concluded there were no walls around Jericho during the late bronze period, but that the walls that were found date from the early bronze, which was back in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So... Does archaeology prove the Bible? Now archaeology does what? Disproves the Bible. Archaeology disproves the Bible. Does archaeology prove the Bible or disprove the Bible? And this raises, uh, and this raises a question. Lo and behold, there's a guy named Bryant Wood. And he comes from the 1990s. Now question, when you're more current, like in the 90s, question, is that like going to be better information than something from the 60s or 70s? Anything from the 60s and 70s got to be wrong, right? It's old, really old. Okay, so anything old has got to be wrong, right? You just ask Al Gore. But anyways, uh, so anything old, old's got to be bad, okay? And so Bryant Wood, by the way, Kathleen Kenyon died. Kathleen Kenyon died. Have you guys, when I, was, when I was in college, I was electrical engineering program. And electrical engineering, we did all these labs, okay? Um, have you ever been in a lab context where you know mathematically what your data should, should turn out to be, and you know what you just did the experiment, and you know what your experiment did turn out to be? Do you guys know what fudge factors are? These are things, uh, we, we got very good at this, what we call fudge factors. I don't know what you guys call them today. We call them fudge factors. And if basically, you went into the lab, you know what it should be, you know what you got, you say, man, we messed up. But we gotta make this thing work. And so what you did is you did these fudge factors and you made your lab work. Our lab hit right on every time, man. And it was just, uh, people don't do that in science, do they? No, no, anyways, uh, this is electrical engineering, that's not really science. But anyways, okay, I'm just being facetious here. Do you ever do data to support your theory and ignore other data that doesn't support your theory? And it turns out that Bryant Wood, now that Dame Kenyon had died, he got in to examine her data and found out that when she said there were no walls there and the walls date from the wrong period, she was only citing data that would support her theory. Was there a whole host of data that contradicted her theory that she ignored? Yes, he found that data and said, holy, look at this. She's just ignored this, my sea pottery, the, the, the cemetery around there when people were buried. She ignored that data. The cemetery where people are buried, does that tell you when things went happen? And so basically, Bryant Wood has shown that some of this stuff is all wrong. And he goes back and he says, this wall was dated correctly by Garstang or thereabouts. It was, should be a late bronze wall. So question, does archaeology prove the Bible, disprove the Bible, or... Are these things debated? Are these things debated? Does every 10 or 20 years, does, does the, 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 the quote scientists change their mind on this stuff? And there's a big debate on this thing. 
So you gotta be, all I'm saying is, you gotta be really careful. When somebody gets up and says, archeology span proves the Bible, you gotta be really careful about that because I could show you a number of places where archeology span say, no, archeology span disproves the Bible and things. And so what I'm saying is, our archeologists, they're scientists that are working with historical stuff. Do they have all the data? They don't have the data. Do they have their own theory? Are certain archeologists working almost purposely to disprove the Bible? And are other ones arguing trying to prove the Bible and stuff. And so you get this kind of thing going down. And so all I'm saying is be careful. Be careful. Archaeology is an art and a science. And so you've got to be careful about the data. If you want good archaeology, what do you do? You take Dr. Wilson's course on archaeology, and he will tell you the truth. Okay? So uh, Dr. Wilson teaches that here, archaeology and things. Now, does the archaeology give us truth then? And all I'm doing is putting a question mark by that. You've got to be careful about putting too much weight on archaeology. Archaeology changes over the periods. We get more and more data. We learn to interpret things differently over a period of time. They have become much more scientific. Uh, Carbon-14 dating has become much, much more accurate than it was 20 years ago. Here's one that happened, I believe it was in the 90s, and I think this is a really cool, neat one. In Israel, they have this place called Mount Ebal, and they, 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 some people call it Mount Hebald, but I don't like that. So it's called Ebal, Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. These are two mountains, and the Jews, when they went in with Joshua, the curses were on Mount Ebal, and the blessings were on Mount Gerizim. Between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, there's a valley, and in that valley is where Shechem is. Does anybody remember Shechem? The, it's where the woman, woman at the well, does anybody remember Jesus at the woman at the well? That was at Shechem. So between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, there's this place called Shechem where the patriarchs went to and Jesus went to later on. I was at Shechem. Last time I was at Shechem, I was taking pictures. Now what's the problem when I take pictures? Do I take pictures in three dimensions? Or in 360 degrees? Normally people go up and there's a stone monument there and they, they take a picture of a stone monument. But because I'm trying to do panoramas, do I do 360? So I took a picture of the, of the stone uh, thing there and then I, I took pictures around. But while I was taking pictures around, I took a picture of this woods over here. And little did I know that there were a bunch of Arab soldiers sitting in that woods watching me take pictures and I just took a picture of them. Is this cool? This is not cool. So all of a sudden, I finished my six pictures around with my wide angle lens, and all of a sudden, out of the bushes on the, the woods on the side, all of a sudden comes out these six guys that are Arab dudes carrying machine guns. And it's like, uh, this is trouble. Um, and so they come up and uh, you're taking pictures, you took pictures and all this kind of stuff and they're freaking out about my camera. I'm thinking, oh man, I hope they don't you know, steal my camera or bust my camera, you know what I'm saying? And things like that, I can come all the way over and take pictures and stuff and stuff. So they get, luckily for me, it was, it was providentially for me, there was a missionary who was a missionary from Amman. He had been 10 years in Amman, knew how to speak Arabic fluently. And my buddy jumps in the way with these guys and starts Arabic, you know, Mahasalami kind of stuff. And so he starts doing his thing and he talks to them and just basically tells them, it's okay, this guy's just a dumb American. He's just taking pictures. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I said, yeah, that's right. Okay. And so the guys, I was, I was really grateful for him. He talked as a missionary. He talked to them in Arabic, fluent Arabic. And, and you know that they did not, I, I was assuming that the, you know, what they should have done was rip the film out of the camera, you know what I'm saying, rip the film out and do that. I was assuming, I was just hoping they weren't going to take my camera. They did not even open my camera. They let me go. He talked his way out of that. And I got the camera and it's like, let's go back to the bus right now. We've had enough of Shechem, okay? Now, up on Mount Ebal, this is in the 90s, the archaeologists on this mountain where the curses were said, the blessings and cursing in Joshua time, there was an altar there was a knoll there, and the archaeologists started digging down, and when they started digging down, they found a huge altar. Not one of these little altars at Beersheba that are you know, this high and this big. This is a huge altar made of uncut stone, and there's a ramp up to it. Now, what does that tell you? Made of uncut stone with a ramp. Did the Canaanites make their altars out of cut stone or uncut? Cut stone. Cut stone put together. This is uncut stone. Were the Jews to make their altars of uncut stone? Were the Jews to make steps up to their altar? No steps. They were to make ramps up uh, to the altar. Guess what? This has a ramp with uncut stones. Question, is this a Jewish altar? It's a Jewish altar. 
dated, that with guys that originally find it, they were dating it to the time of Joshua. And what they're suggesting is that this, this altar, chapter 8, verse 30, it says this, Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. And what they were suggesting is that they have actually found the altar that Joshua built. Now, as soon as somebody says they found the altar that Joshua built, showing that the Bible is historically accurate, what happens the next day? Other archaeologists get there and they attack this thing and saying, oh, it was misdated to the wrong period. They missed it by 300 years and therefore it's not the altar of Joshua. It's some, we don't know whose altar it is, but it's some big old, big, big honking altar up there. And so there's now question, is there going to be debate over this? Is there debate over this? Till this day, they go back and forth in the debate. So all I'm going to do is say, now, by the way, do I think it's Joshua's altar? This is one I think is Joshua. I think they got it right. I think this is Joshua's altar. But there's a lot of controversy over this, and this is what happens in archaeology. All I'm wanting you to do is give a sense for archaeology. Does archaeology prove the Bible? Yeah, you've got to be real careful with that. You've got to be real careful with that. Otherwise, you've got archaeology just proving the Bible at certain points, and you've got to sort through this, and everybody's got their theories, and things get misdated. And there's all sorts of problems and stuff. So you've got to be careful. They're learning more and more about the culture. Archaeology is one of the great sciences of the world and the things that we've learned about the ancient Near East. But you've got to be real careful. It's, it's really debated. A lot of this stuff's debated.